And welcome to the applicant pre-certification training session. We will be demonstrating how to make a pre-cert 50059. You might ask, so why would I want to make a pre-cert? Well, here are some reasons why making a pre-cert are to your good advantage. The certification form qualifies them for occupancy. If your property is also a tax credit property, multi-site will test for income and rent limit qualifications also. And it will also make a tax credit certification at the same time. If it's an RRD property or rural development property, the same applies to that. Move-ins are a breeze. For example, a tenant says, I mean, an applicant says they will move in on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. If you don't make a pre-cert, you will not have them, you will not have anything for them to sign. Therefore, if you want them to sign a certification, you would have to move them into multi-site software to get a cert for them to sign. Well, multi-site will not let you move a tenant in the future, so you'd have to do it Saturday morning. If you move them in and then they don't show up, what do you do? Well, you'd have to move them out the same day. A pre-cert solves this problem. Make a pre-cert and print out with a whole package. If your tenant shows up, just have them sign it, and if they are successful in moving in that day, you can just do a copy to move in. All the information is transferred in one stroke. Also, printed verification forms are easy. The forms will be pre-addressed with the applicant information, and the applicant 5-9 data can be used in the waiting list. So all the fields that need to make you compliant with your waiting list are on the 5-9 form. All right, now let's get started. First, you're going to open the HUD module and click the group sidebar called Applicants. I'm going to make the assumption that you've already entered an applicant. And the criminal and background check have come back clean and the applicant has provided you with the information necessary to begin filling out the 5-9 to finish qualifying them and placing them on the waiting list. Next, click the View Applicants icon. This causes the main grid to fill with all applicants, all active applicants. The lower grid would show applicant transactions like deposit money or prepaid rent, etc. Get focus on an applicant and double click to open the applicant form. We're not going to go into detail about how to use this form and all of its functionality. That's in another training video. What we're going to do right now is to look at the button at the bottom of the form, the one that says New Pre-50059. We're going to press that, and the 59 form opens. And guess what? It looks exactly like the 50059 that you're used to. That's why we did it that way. Now, it comes pre-filled with information, any information that you already had on the applicant form. And it may or may not have been complete over there. But when we save this pre-cert, it's going to update the fields in the applicant form with everything from on the 59. Now, when you come into this field, into this form, your, your, uh, your cursor is going to be in the date field at the top. Now, normally that's the effective date of a certification. What we're going to use this for is an anticipated move-in date. You may or may not know it. If you do know it or if you don't know it, you have to enter in some kind of a date. I'm going to enter one now. I'm just going to type 06012000. The 6 on that last one, it automatically jumped to the unit ID field. To navigate in this form, you're better off not using a mouse. Try to use the tab key or the enter key to move from one field to the next, unless you need to make a jump, a big jump. And you'll see later a place. Now the unit ID was already filled in because that came over from the applicant field. You picked one because that unit had the right unit type. At this point it doesn't matter if it's if it's that one but what does matter is if you pick a one bedroom, a two bedroom, or a three bedroom whatever the tenant, the future tenant is going to ultimately use. I'm going to press the tab key and it goes to type of subsidy. That actually comes from the contract that they're in. You can hit tab and go by that. It moves to the date tenant moved into this project. For the application form, we're going to leave that alone. We're going to tab through till we get down to some required fields. Now notice when I change fields, 
like right now look at the 9a race ahead of household it's blue field I am actually over in the no box with my tab field when I tab into this race ahead of household it's going to turn white that tells you where your cursor is in case you got lost if you see all the blue fields for one all the blue fields are fields that are available for you to fill in and two when they turn white that means that's where your cursor is now this particular field race of head of, race of, head of household right underneath there it says enter one for white two for black three for native american or alaskan and four for asian or pacific islander i'm going to show you a feature now that uh, will bring up a pop-up list anywhere on this form in fact almost anywhere in multi-site if there is a list to be displayed you can press f2 and it'll bring up that list like i'm going to do right now okay i brought up the f2 list i'm going to start typing i'm going to press one that's white and i'm going to press enter and there it is i press tab to go to the next one i'm just going to enter a number uh, hispanic i'm going to hit tab and it goes over to previous housing code for move-ins only this field and the next one are required for move-ins and this is an application but it's going to be required when you do a copy to move in there's no hints here so I'm going to press F2 and I'm going to take my mouse in and put it on the standard right here and then I'm going to double click on and it pops that number in there number three which was for standard I press the tab key the displacement code for move-ins only it turns white I know my cursor is there. I press F2, and up comes the choice list. I'm going to double click on Not Displaced. Now, I don't need to fill in the next code, the preferences code for move ins or initial certification, because I don't have any. I press Tab again, and I go down to the last name of family member, which is Partridge, William Partridge. That's correct. That came over from the application. Uh, I did not enter in a middle initial. See, it's white there. There's a question mark to notify me that it does not know the answer to that field. I'm going to put an M for the Williams move-in initial. I press tab and it goes to the sex. You're going to enter in a male or female here. Hit tab. Date of birth. I enter in... 1955 when I when I this is a date field so when I entered the 1955 when that field was full it automatically tabbed to the next field which is special status code at that time the age automatically calculated I now have focus on the special status code I'm going to press F2 key and here's your list I'm going to mark this one as handicapped now you can okay I, I left him as handicapped I'm gonna press tab and it goes down to the last name of a family member I could continue moving in I mean not moving in but I could enter in an, an one or more occupants they're gonna come with them but I'm gonna shorten this for this demonstration I'm gonna jump down to see that number three that's a marker that's you could jump to or I can take my mouse and I can move right into here into the social security number what the social security number just like a date field when I finished filling in the required numbers it jumped over to the eligibility code that field that it skipped over is the alien registration if you did not have a social security number and you wanted it in the alien registration go back there and put it in there the eligibility code by default is EC. If I press F2, I can see that EC is indeed one of the official head codes. I'm going to leave that in there. Place of birth, I can type in here family member occupation, welder. Now, the next place to go 
uh, well, there's no more there's no more uh, members, so I went back. Multisite took me back to enter in more social security numbers. Expected family edition size. Let's see a folder over here. You can enter those in there and change them and overwrite them right now. All right, it's time to enter the net family assets. I could take my mouse and move down to the net family assets there in part three, but notice the marker number five. That means I can hold down the control key and just press five and I jump right to it. See how that works? Now right here, you'd think you could type some in, but you cannot. The F2 key, the same one that we use for picking lists out in, in all of multi-site, is now used to bring up and now the Add Asset Summary Sheet opens up. Of course, it's empty because we have not added any assets. All we have to do now is press the Add Asset button, and the Asset Worksheet will open up. Member number one is already filled in. The effective date is already filled in from the first page. I'm going to enter the entity name, and I'm going to call it Bank of Brent. I press Enter a tab, and I go in the Type of Assets. I'm going to type Savings. Current or imputed, I type a C for current or imputed. Let's say that it's got $1,525. Now right here, this interest rate. For one thing, you enter in less than the numeral 1, so 1% 1 would not be a 1. It would be 0.01, wouldn't it? Now, you have a choice right here. You can enter in an amount like I'm going to do right now. I'm going to say 0.0125. I'm going to press tab, and it calculated $19.06. You may use that method, or you may put in a known amount, like $5. So in effect, I have overridden that. I'm going to press the save, and I'm taking And now we're at the asset summary sheet where we can see the record that we just entered. I could enter more by pressing the add asset button, but I know you guys want to get out of here and close this recording session as soon as we can. So I'm going to just hit the Save button and close. All right, I've jumped down to the income portion there where the number 6 is. And as I put my cursor in here, the member number field, I, I, I cannot type in here. So if you type it on your keyboard and nothing happens, remember that Brent told you to press F2, which I'm going to do right now. This brings up the same looking form. It's a summary form. The Add Income has focus. I'm going to press Enter, and here comes in the entry form. Member number one is already filled in as of the effective date. Care code required for child care. Now, if you are going to claim child care expenses before, right here is where you would put in if this is a C for a qualifying expense. I'm going to skip that right now. I'm going to Description. I pressed Enter, and it brought up this pop-up form pops up, and you can pick from the available incomes. I'm going to pick Business. I double-clicked on, and that brought Business in. Now, the field right underneath it is where we're going next. When I press Tab, it's labeled Income Code. When I press Enter, and it enters that field, it's going to bring up another pop-up field. I'm going to choose Non-Federal Wage by double-clicking on it. I press Tab to go in the Benefits Claim Number. We don't need to fill that in. If it was a field like, uh, I don't know, TANF or something like that, it, the Social Security number of that member would already fill in there for you. I'm going to enter the entity name here, which would be where they work, okay? And it's called My Printer Company. I tab down to Hourly or Periodic. It's set for Periodic. Look, I could, I could leave it as periodic, and I could put uh, $12,500 a year, one times a year, and it calculates the annual amount of $12,500. I could also take my mouse up to here, and I could change that to an H, and I tab off of it, and the fields change. Where the $12,500 is now is rate per hour. Let's say that he makes... 1050 an hour. I press tab. He works uh, 32 hours a week and he works 50 weeks a year. And uh, 
he makes $150 overtime. That's a total of $16,950. I'm going to press the Save button. And now we're back to the income summary information. I'm not going to enter any more. I'm just going to hit the Close button to Record, Save, Waiting List. Right after the pre-cert closes, we're taken back to the applicant form where we left off. Now, any information that was in the pre-cert is now filled into the applicant form. For example, the Social Security number and if you change the spelling name, things like that. Now, look at the tabs at the very top. To complete this, we're going to go change the status. On the left side, there's Options buttons. New, Accepted, Rejected, Removed, Update, Inactive, Lost App. For this demonstration, I'm going to accept this person onto the waiting list by clicking the Accepted button. A message box just popped up that says, Important Date Time Milestone. It reads, Important that you update status change date and time like month, month, day, day, year, year, hour, hour, minute, minute. AM and PM. I'm going to hit OK to close this box. Now the reason this is important on the accepted date because this is a very important date. Read the red letters out to the right of where my cursor has a focus right now, the status date change the time. Important, when you change this status, upgrade the charge date. I mean the change date. You will not have another opportunity after saving. This is to keep the integrity of the date changes. Enter like month, month, day, day, year, year, hour, hour, minute, minute, a.m., p.m. Now more than likely you're going to change this, but it defaults for right now. All I have to do now is save, and then hit the exit button, and we are back to the applicant grid right where we left off. I would like to personally thank you for taking the time to view this training session. I know it is hard to watch these without getting distracted. When you watch this video again or any of the others, please take note of the video player control buttons. They are sometimes located in different parts of the screen. This toolbar gives you a fast forward, pause, and reverse to replay parts of the video you want to review or skip. Have a nice day.